All right, so welcome back from the break. You're still watching Morning Rush. We're getting into a conversation this morning where we'll be discussing um, what is scarcity among um, K-12 teachers. So K-12 basically is um, the classroom from kindergarten to the 12th grade. So in Ghana, we would say from kindergarten to like, junior high school level, what exactly is the issue when it comes to what's the situation among them? We've got Francis Sonyon, who's the executive administrative assistant at Obene Inc. And uh, also joining us via Zoom is Dr. Ekuya Anye Obeng, who is the general director at Obene Inc. Also, so we're getting into this, these conversations. We'll get onto Zoom and also we'll speak to um, you know, our gentleman in the studio also. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Great. What was the situation? Like? Because generally, Ghana has a water problem. Right. But when it comes to teachers at that level, from kindergarten to, you know, um, as we said, JHS level, what is the situation right now? My name is Francis Ognon, and mm -hmm. as you said, I'm the administrative assistant of Inc. So basically, the, the main problem is most teachers um, don't really have access to clean drinking water. Most teachers don't have access to clean drinking water. Okay. Yeah, so um, our, project, our water project is targeting those people, mm. so especially those in the remote areas. Okay. Yeah, so we don't want to take out those, in, uh, um, those around. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so we want to make it on a plain level so everyone can have access to water. Free, actually it's free. Okay. So that's what we are doing. Fantastic. Um, I like that. But let's get on to Zoom and speak to you, Dr. Obeng, and then we'll come back um, into the studio. Good morning, Dr. Obeng. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? Very well, very well. Great. So, um, I mean, he was just telling me about the fact that a lot of, you know, teachers um, in these um, classes from kindergarten to GHS do not have access to um, portable drinking water. From your research and from the things that you have done, what more can you add to, to that? Thank you for your question. Uh, so according to UNICEF, a recent data, it shows that in Ghana, one out of 10 every person spends about 30 minutes in accessing water. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that accessing water was such an issue within mm. uh, among the population in Ghana. And you know, teachers spend about seven hours in the classroom. Some of them go home and they are still doing some work at home because they have to correct the homeworks of these kids. And so we like, why not help them with one thing that it takes them 30 minutes to do, which is being able to access portable water. So that's why the idea came from of taking water on the tables of these teachers within the classroom. So that even teachers in the remote areas that have uh, some difficulty in accessing clean water can have this access so easily and freely. Mm. So that is where the idea came from, and this is the research we're basing on. Great, but, but did you also find out how this has impacted the lives of, as teachers in these areas? Because if I'm a teacher and let's say I live in an urban area and I'm being posted to a place where I cannot have access to you know, portable water just when I want it, um, I could decide that, you know what, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm leaving the area. Did you find that also? What did you find us on that? Yes. Uh, so recently we were tagged on a post on Facebook about a teacher that was in a remote area complaining about having access to drinking water. And I think teachers should be assisted in, in the work that they do because the work they do is very, very difficult. And so having the task of taking care of these students, that sometimes can be very troublesome. And also having to think about how do I even get water to drink? makes their job very complicated and it increases the dropout of many teachers within the field of education. And you know, every country bases its growth on education as well. So we do not want our teachers dropping out of school just because they don't have access to water. Mm. And, and also for the families, I mean, for, for the female teachers, they, they would have to be doing a lot more uh, to be able to get water for their family, sort out their home before getting to the school and rushing back and trying to get water in these areas. But what about the authorities in these areas? You know, what, what have you found out that they've been doing to help? Are they even doing anything to help in these areas so that teachers could be free from all of these things uh, that we're talking about? Yeah, there are some initiatives be on, on, on the part of some governmental institutions as mm. well as the UNICEF, UNICEF that's assist in uh, providing water. 
But uh, uh, there is also a percentage that is not covered. That is why we have stepped in as an organization to close that gap that exists in between government and institutions that are helping and these teachers that may not necessarily benefit from this uh, assistance. So that's why we are stepping in the gap. There is assistance out there, but we want to contribute to it as well. Okay, so what what are what are the the exact things you are doing on the ground to make sure that we're able to um, you know sort out those issues? So we do open an application out there freely to all teachers to fill out. Uh, they do complete this the, the request on on. Uh, on our website, uh, Francis goes through uh, the, the list of the applications that comes out. And then we schedule uh, every school per month. Uh, as so far, we have gone to some few schools in Kasua, in Wai area, and we're hoping to go to other schools in Quail. Recent, uh, we'll be going to Apam very soon. And so once we get this application, we see how many teachers are on, on, on in the school campus, and then we see how many bags of water we can provide to these teachers. And also, we have even gone out of the, you know, the field of education to assist some prisoners as well. So this is uh, a reach that we provide not just for teachers, but we're trying our best to cover every person who needs our assistance as well. Okay, you hold on. Uh, let me get back to Francis here in the studio. So, I mean, she mentioned your name as, you know, you go through the applications. Yes. I'm not a regular. <laughs> How many of them do you receive? Um, I think since we started in February, I think we, we as you say, we normally do, do this in, on a monthly basis. Okay. So in a month, probably I get about four or five schools. Okay. Yeah, so when the application comes in, I, I go through it. I check the location, uh, the, the number of teachers in the school, and also um, we try to communicate with the head the heads of the various schools before okay. any permission. So, mm. yeah, so that's, that's that, basically that's what we do. Mm. So when I go through them, then we fix a date, as she said, fix a date, then when the, when the time is due, we go. And also one thing we do is we we try and, and, and locate a, a depot or where okay. they produce the water. We don't mm. want to buy it from in, just anywhere. So we want the money to go to the community as well. Oh. So we look for a depot around or where uh, they manufacture some of the water. So we do, we, then we do the purchase from there, then straight to the school. They don't do the donation, and everything is for free. Okay, so for now, your solution is to get them water. Yeah. You know, so um, like, as you mentioned, you buy the water for them. Yeah. But not exactly like maybe getting them a ball or, or that's something that you'll be working on. Yeah, later. yeah. We are looking at that in the future. But currently, okay. we want to provide them with clean water. Okay. Because um, the the last two schools we did in Wa, um, they had no access to uh, drinking water. They said they had a mechanized uh, borehole. Bo it's not working. Mm. So they had to go a long distance to get water. So they were very happy when we provided that, that thing for them. And also when we do that, we also try to ask for feedbacks. Mm. So they, uh, they informed us that they need a borehole. So okay. I, I spoke to Doc as well. Okay. Doc, so um, as we wrap up on the conversation, any final thing that you want to touch on uh, before uh, we take leave of you? Yes. Uh, so we want to invite other schools. Uh, maybe you've not heard about us. So we want to use your platform as well to reach many other schools that may need our assistance to take advantage of these initiatives that we're providing for community members. So we hope that many people will hear about this and will be willing also uh, to reach out to us because there is no fees in, uh, involved in this process so that we can be of help to them as well. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Ikeo Bing is uh, General Director of Abena Inc. She joined us. That's when Francis is still here. We'll wrap it up on the conversation. But I'm curious to know, uh, um, are you getting them these uh, vehicles that bring water to them? Or, uh, Sashi, like, I just want to know what, what type of water you're talking about here. Thank you for your question. Um, it's basically the, the, the Sashi. Okay. Initially, we planned on, uh, you know, moving water to the schools, probably they have a uh, uh, tanks so I realized that won't, that won't help. Okay. So we, we buy the sachet, the bags, we, do, we give it to the school, to the teachers. It's for the teachers. Okay. Yeah, so we, we give it to the teachers through the school. Mm. Yeah, so basically okay. that's what we do. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Francis, um, any final thing you want to add, you know, how people can reach out to, to you before we go? Yeah, sure. Um, they can follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Obene Inc. And also visit our website on www. They are okay. Our being dot com. Okay. The forms are there. They can uh, fill up. Okay. Fill up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So very um, important conversation there. You know how these things can, um, you know, um, does not exactly help teachers 
in these areas, and not just even in the remote areas, in the urban areas, there are places that you have water being uh, the hardest commodity to find there. And so if you're a school, you can log on and uh, check out Obene Inc. And um, definitely they could come to um, your aid. So thank you very much, Francis Sonyo, for coming in. He's executive administrative assistant at Obene Inc. And also from Dr. Ikea Obing, who is the general director of Obene Inc.